As the 70s turn into the 80s, America feels bruised. The Middle East oil crisis, American hostages in Iran. Surveys show only 22% of Americans trust the government. Unemployment and inflation are both at the highest levels since the Great Depression. America has endured economic downtime before. In the 1930s, Roosevelt tries to bring America out of its Great Depression with government spending and new initiatives. But he also harnesses the power of a new medium, radio, to speak directly to the nation. Franklin Roosevelt had this truly mysterious capacity to speak through the radio in a way that compelled not just the attention but the affection of millions upon millions of his countrymen. Now, half a century later, a new president uses television in his attempt to restore the nation's confidence. How can we not believe in the greatness of America? How can we not do what is right and needed to preserve this last best hope of man on earth? His uh, nickname was the Great Communicator. He was able to articulate in a way that many people would accept as being innately American. Americans wanted to believe that their country was good and strong. And Reagan spoke to them in a voice that said, yes, we are. My fellow citizens, I'd like to speak to you tonight about our future, about a great historic effort to give the words freedom, fairness, and hope, new meaning and power for every man and woman in America. Specifically, I want to talk about taxes. The 1980s appeared to be a new era of American financial prosperity. Low interest rates and the easy credit that flows lead a business boom. Over the course of the decade, trading on Wall Street markets breaks records. The Dow Jones Index rises more than 200%. By the 1980s, 100,000 Americans become millionaires every year. There have been boom times before. The oil rush leads to cheap gasoline and cars for the masses. And cheap steel leads to a construction boom, builds new cities. Now in 1980s America, cheap credit creates a boom in consumerism. The credit card is the symbol of the decade. Invent in 1958, once reserved for the wealthy, now it's democratized. By 1989, more Americans have credit cards than vote in elections. The ADC cardholders increase their debt by a factor of five. By the end of the decade, Americans are spending nearly a quarter of a trillion dollars on their credit cards every year. During the 80s, the number of shopping malls surpasses the number of high schools. There's a 78% increase in fast food stores. Spending on restaurant food more than doubles to over $250 billion in a decade. During that decade, we probably became more materialistic than we ever had before. Consumption was off the chart. But what consumers really want is technology. The latest home appliances, the latest entertainment technology. There are barely two million VCRs in 1980 over 63 million by 1990. From a few thousand cell phones, by the end of the decade, there are over five million. Your first pocket knife, your first bicycle, your first car, today, you know, your first cell phone, your first laptop, all these are badges of gaining control over your world, of having, being able to live life better because you have a better tool and the skill to use it. That's something that's deeply appealing to the American psyche. But many of these consumer technology advances are developed directly from the biggest spending spree of all. Okay. The space race. The Cold War with the Soviet Union is still going strong, laying out across the globe and the final frontier. By the end of the Cold War, seven trillion dollars has been spent, keeping America ahead of her communist rival. The result, one of the most sophisticated and daring spacecraft ever built, the Space Shuttle. 
The space shuttle was a beautiful idea, it was an elegant craft that would be more efficient, more economical, because it could, it could take off and land and be reusable. And the shuttle adds to America's consumer boom. One of its primary functions is to launch communication satellites, helping expand America's ever-growing appetite for entertainment, communications, telephones, and GPS. And the technology that goes into the shuttle also comes back to Earth. Cell phones, water purification, airplane landing gear, firefighting equipment, cordless power tools, medical tech, and even ski wear. All benefited from the shuttle program. For many, the shuttle is symbolic of the American story. It's like one of those self-fulfilling prophecies. You know, uh, let's work for a better future, we'll get the better future. Talk about the frontier spirit. It's not a question of succeeding or failure. It's just, it's, it's just continuous growth, which is really inspirational. 25th Space Shuttle mission, and it is... But the nation's faith in technology is about to receive a blow. The shuttle is a new era for America. Space age technology is powering the country forward. The nation's been built on innovation. New technologies create progress, wealth, expansion. As axes improve, forests can be cleared at a greater rate. And new military technology wins wars. Makes nations. Throughout our history, Every one of these technologies has been transformative in a way that has changed economies, it's changed lives, it's changed settlement patterns. It takes entrepreneurs like Andrew Carnegie. He takes new steel production techniques and supersizes them to produce vast quantities of the raw materials that build the great American cities. And engineering geniuses like Mulholland, his 223-mile L.A. aqueduct allows a city to grow from the desert. But progress often carries a human cost. 1825. Building the Erie Canal to connect the Great Lakes to New York City claims nearly a thousand lives. 1865. The Transcontinental Railroad. Almost two thousand lives. At the turn of the century, two out of every five men die or are disabled, building the skyscrapers of America's new cities. Three, two, one, and liftoff. Now, the space shuttle is the pinnacle of a new era of American technology. 1986 is to be the fleet's busiest year. The crew of the Challenger shuttle is chosen to represent a cross-section of modern America. Different races, backgrounds, professions. And the idea always was, can we begin to open this up somehow to more people than just highly trained astronauts? The dream of spaceflight is extending to everyday Americans. The shuttle is seen as an easy, safe route to the final frontier. Go and throttle up. But on January 28, 1986, just 73 seconds after takeoff, Challenger explodes, live on national television. You could see that it took the audience a few seconds to realize what they were seeing because it was so hard to interpret. Seven lives lost. All of a sudden it was like, how could that have happened? I mean, NASA, the United States, we're, we're like the best in the world at this. What happened? Challenger, go and throttle up. It was like a blow to the gut of the nation. And uh, we do fail at times. But the greatest test comes from what happens after you realize and accept the fact that you fail. Do you go crawl into a corner and 
never do anything again, or you get back up, dust yourself off, and move forward. Just three years after Challenger, the Cold War is over, and so is the space race. While one generation has dreamed of their future in outer space, the next will create theirs on a new frontier, cyberspace.